We are live. This is our first ever live stream, guys. Welcome. I'm a little bit retarded. Lucky I've got Vinny here, the producer. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, guys. So we've got 500K Ask Me Anything. Massive, massive W for the Rattlesnake TV community. Hitting 500K. I absolutely love you guys. We've got some great questions already coming in. W's in the chat. Rattlesnake TV. Let me see some W's. Let's go. All right. First question. Oh, Kane Baker. Hi, Jake. Huge fan from Australia. Would like to catch a live stream, but I'll have to watch tomorrow. Wanted to ask you your thoughts on the political situation in Australia at the moment. Um, the political situation in Australia is a funny one. We've got a bit of a dork prime minister, Anthony Albanese. He's been caught recently dancing at a Taylor Swift concert. Um, not only should that be frowned upon, it should probably be illegal for a fully grown man to be at a Taylor Swift concert for any other reason than to be dropping his daughters off and picking them up or accompanying his daughters. So that should be illegal. So he is a dork. What other questions have we got here? If all goes well, Trudeau will be out this time around for Canada. You know what, guys? I absolutely love Canada. It's one of my favorite countries. I did a massive road trip there from um, Vancouver all the way up to Banff, Whistler, Lake Louise. And they need to get that man out because Canadians are cool. They're friendly. A lot of stoners as well, which is not my thing, but whatever. What do you think of Candace versus the Jewish lobbyist thing? Are you a bystander or is, this, or is there a side you are leaning towards? Well, I think that anybody who tries to bully somebody for their opinions and anybody who tries to slander people and have hit pieces written against them and basically use their power and influence to destroy somebody's reputation is obviously in the wrong. I am a massive supporter of Candace and I've got her back through this. That is for sure. So definitely not a bystander. So I cover Candace so much on this channel, especially at the moment. All right. So Dear Younger Self says... Hi, I'm fairly new to your channel. Enjoy your insightful commentaries and comical edits. Thanks, for Vinny, for those comical edits. Would you consider adding a debate model to your format? Where would you, where would you moderate? That's a good question. I have been really considering that, actually. It's probably one of my next moves, and that's why I actually got StreamYard, despite the fact that I'm an absolute grandpa and I can't work it and I, don't, I just know how to do the absolute basics. But I actually know a fair few people in this space now. I've been doing a fair bit of networking, I would love to have religious debates between like Muslims and Jews and Jews and Christians because I can't really debate the finer details of theology myself. I'd like to do some of those, but also political debates. The problem is that a lot of the people that I would love to get on the channel to debate, like Douglas Murray, for example, I, I've got him on Twitter. He's a friend of mine. We follow each other. I think that makes us friends anyway, but no one will debate him. That's the problem. We could do some more theological ones, but I don't know. Let me know in the chat, guys. What do you think? Would you prefer to see theological ones? Would you prefer to see left versus right? Would you prefer to see Israel, Palestine, Russia, Ukraine? What kind of debates would you like to see? Let me know. But yes, that's definitely something that I would like to do. Robert Camus, Camus, like the philosopher, but spelt different. Robert is a long time watcher. Big love, Robert. Any plans to go on the whatever podcast again? Uh, no plans at the moment, but I probably will at some point. The only thing is that April, late April, start of May, I'm going to the UK. I'm going to be spending a few weeks there. So got a few things to do over there. And then I'll be spending a little bit of time in Asia, Bali, Cambodia, and then going towards the east of Europe to visit the naughty country at some point, hopefully. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Thank you for your support, Robert. Robert also says... What are your opinions on Kent Hovind? I think he's some sort of evangelical Christian, so sounds like a Chad. Um, what else have we got? Bob Warner, why did you choose to be an overall voice for those with conservative views and have you faced backlash from your family and friends for being so open? Well, my family, no, because we're, my family are the best and they're, we're a pretty tight-knit group and we have pretty similar opinions. Friends, I mean, maybe, but they won't really say anything if they do. A few people have tried to go at me about it, but oftentimes, to be honest, people who aren't like intimately involved in the space and people who don't really study these things very much will come at you with pretty bad logic all the time. And so I'm, I'm not going to take it upon myself to try and untangle their logic and to try and have hours long conversations with them. 
especially if they're more inclined to react to things emotionally and not logically. Instagram, I get a lot of Instagram DMs about why I'm why I'm wrong and terrible. So um, no, I don't try and change their mind. They're free to think whatever they want about me. But no, my family and friends are pretty rock solid. What other jobs have you had? I've had so many jobs, guys. It's not even funny. Like I've I've worked. What was my first job? Working as a fishmonger at a restaurant at a like a. I got fired from being from my job as a fishmonger when I was 14. My mom put me straight in the workforce, which is like the best thing that ever happened to me. I got fired from being a fishmonger because I was getting really bored at work. And you've got like big ice slabs and you put the fish on top of them and you, you know, you'd have to chop, chop them up and everything. And I got really bored and I'm like, yeah, I'm 14 years old. So I started grabbing these handfuls of ice and throwing them at customers and then grabbing the hose and spraying customers and then hiding behind my desk. I thought that that was a funny and appropriate thing to do <laughs> for some reason at work. And then I also got caught eating a lot of the prawns. I was a bit of a, I was a, bit of a chubby, chubby teenager, guys. So I used to enjoy a prawn and a bit of Thousand Island sauce. The boss sat me down and he went through the CCTV. And um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great. They did an inventory and they realized that they were operating at a loss with prawns. So, <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of jobs. I've had, I worked on a winery for a while. I worked at a brewery for three years. I did recruitment for a while. I was a personal trainer for like a year and a half. Many, many different jobs. Worked in the service industry for a few years. So lots and lots of different things. James says, how has life changed from since moving from Australia to the US? How do you like Nashville? Do you feel more free to express controversial beliefs. I haven't exactly moved to the US yet, but that is a part of the plan. I was in Miami for a little while. Now I'm in Nashville. I do like Miami, but it's a little bit crazy for me at times. I'm a bit, I'm from, I'm from a smaller sort of, I live in a smaller sort of place in Australia. So Miami's a bit, bit much for me sometimes. I prefer Nashville. The only thing is that in terms of content, Miami and Florida is like the, like the Mecca for content. So it's really difficult to, it's really difficult to want to set up in Nashville because it's more of like a proper conservative Nashville, Tennessee. And there's not really much, there's not really much of a broad range of people that we could sort of do content with. So it depends. I can see why the daily wire set up here though. Will you do a breakdown of Candace and the rabbi says Natalie Duke. I will, but I actually have to be careful with this stuff guys, because I I'm pretty sure you guys know that if you go into certain, topics and if you're too outspoken then bad things can happen so it's a risky one to go for but you know obviously i think that candace is in the right in that situation and i think that she's being bullied so yeah i've got i've got i've got to think hard about that one if i'm totally honest guys i'm not going to act like i'm not going to sort of just ghost it and shadow it i do want to do it but the reality of it is that you have to be very careful so Dano says, based on today, it seems like you've dropped the libertarian position, Jake. What influence do you think differently about it? Well, I used to be like, I called myself a libertarian a few years ago. And I think that generally speaking, the libertarian view isn't a bad one. I think that libertarians are allies in a sense, like guys like Dave Smith. I love listening to his commentary. And I think he has a coherent and worldview. However, if you, if you do subscribe to the Christian worldview, as I do, and more and more so by the day and more and more so by the month as you go deeper into it, the libertarian worldview isn't compatible, isn't compatible with that. So unfortunately, and not unfortunately, I think that people's opinions change over time. And as I've become leaned more into faith, I've started to move further away from the libertarian perspective, just in the sense of the social, socially liberal thing, because I think that it's incumbent upon us to go towards the truth and to move towards the truth and to try and create societies that are centered around the truth. And eventually, if you just let people do what they want all the time, then it's going to seep into the culture as we've seen with what's happening in the schools. And I think that there's just a lot of downstream effects that aren't ideal. Do you believe in objective? Rattlesnake TV, do you believe in objective or subjective reality? That is my question. Well, I, th I think that reality is objective. It's a pretty deep philosophical question, but 
I think that reality is definitely objective and there are many things that we can just intrinsically and inherently know as objective. We can understand principles of the, of the world such as morality, ethics, mathematics, and I even think that science is objective in a way. So all of the constituents of reality, in my opinion, are, are objective, even things such as aesthetics and beauty. And that's why I do lean towards the universe obviously being created. But that's a deeper question. What do you think of Javier Millet, the first libertarian president, Zeke Motion? Here in Argentina, we are super happy. Yeah, I, I love Javier Millet. I think that he's he's fantastic. And Argentina needs some serious surgery. So I spent a bit of time in Argentina in 2019, and it's one of my favorite countries. If you go around Buenos Aires to areas like Palermo, it's fantastic. You, people are up until like 1, 2 a.m., eating meat, drinking wine. The women are beautiful. The atmosphere is amazing. And it's just a great country. It's, they, I think they used to be called the Paris of Latin America back in the early 1900s. So I absolutely love Argentina. I'm glad that they've got a new president in because they've been absolutely plagued by socialism. There's so much potential in that country. So I, yeah, I'm happy about Javier MLA. We'll see though. We'll see. I think that anything's better than what they've had. Put it that way. Robo Q Man says, all thanks to Jesse. Any thanks to Jesse Waters' appearance? I think that might be what he meant to have said. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate Jesse Waters. He's he's actually a cool guy and he's hmm? oh yeah, shit. Sure. Sorry, guys. Um oh yes, so I appreciate Jesse Waters. He's a cool guy. His producer reached out to me. His producer's a super nice guy as well. Um, and yeah, I appreciate Jesse, man. I actually was speaking to his producer yesterday about going back on the show again. I think they've got an office in Nashville or they've got a studio in Nashville. So I'm not a massive fan of Fox news. If I'm totally honest, since they left, since Tucker left them, I literally haven't tuned in once. I don't necessarily watch Jesse waters or Gutfeld or any of those guys, but I, I can appreciate them. However, I think that their future will be outside of the mainstream. So, um, that's what I think about that. Oh, sorry, guys. I missed one. Way Up North says, would you like to see, who would you like to see as the VP for Trump? I would obviously like to see Vivek. I think Vivek is an absolutely outstanding candidate. He's a genius. We don't get many geniuses in politics. I mean, Trump's last VP, Mike Pence, was basically an NPC. So he has about as much charisma as a damp rag. So I wouldn't be too keen on seeing that. But Vivek would be the best. I think that Christy Noam might get it just because... Trump tends to struggle a little bit with the female demographics, especially with the sort of boomer females. And Christy Noem would bring in a little bit of that vote. I think that the Republicans have struggled a little bit since the Roe v. Wade decision. Obviously, I'm in favor of that decision, what happened. But I think the Republicans have struggled a little bit, especially with the female base. So maybe like a female, a bit of a softer touch would be good for him to have there. Him and Vivek would maybe clash a little bit too much. It's a tough one, though. I want to see in the chat what you guys think. Do you think Vivek would be a smart option for Trump to take? We all know that he'd be a good option, but do you think he'd be the smartest option in terms of getting votes? Joseph Loicono, sounds like a good Italian boy, says, what got me watching was you doing fresh takes of somewhat older clips I had forgotten about. Your commentary kept me here. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. The funny thing is that when I started YouTube, I've been obsessed with debates for years. I'm like completely autistic about it. So I had all of the this massive repository of old debates that I'd watched and kind of remembered and then was able to refer back to. And I was able to do these breakdowns of them. Whereas a lot of other channels that do similar sort of content, they just so they just don't really have like the background knowledge of it. I think that there's a little bit of a grift going on there at times in terms of people just doing it and reacting to it, not saying too much. But I thought that I could actually take these conversations and these debates, these really long form ones, and then take this, the, the best moments from them and add some value to the conversation and context. So what have we got? Joseph again says, are you Christian or religious? I would like to see some more religious debates or general content. That's a good question. Yes, I am a Christian. It's something that I've been exploring for since COVID, really. Before that, I was actually one of the liberal atheists. I was that guy who would say to Christians, you believe in a sky daddy. 
you, you know, you believe this and that you're such an idiot. And I would debate them about it and try and humiliate them. I actually used to work at the Salvation Army. It's another job that I had. I used to work at a homeless shelter for a year and a half in 20, I want to say 2018 or so, 2018, 2019. And uh, I used to work with a bunch of Christians. I always used to laugh at them and say, what do you think when you die, you're going to go to heaven and start clapping with some angels? And then COVID happened and I became much more aware of the evil around me. And with that, I started to become much more lucidly aware of the, of the, of the polarity of the universe and the good and evil battle that was happening in the universe. And now I've, I'm at the point where I actually look at the world as a spiritual battle and everything is a spiritual and religious battle. You look at the Israel-Palestine conflict at the moment, I think that that's about 0% politics and totally religious and spiritual. So, yeah, I mean, but in terms of the, you'd like to see some more religious debates, I would like to do that. And I'm actually thinking about doing it, but it just depends on what you guys would like to see. So if that's something that you would enjoy, then I'll do it. And also my other hesitation with doing that is that I'm, it's probably the most complicated thing you can possibly go into. And I've only... I've only really dipped my toes in this and I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert in this field whatsoever. So I, I'd, get, I'd get some serious imposter syndrome if I had to do that, but we will see because maybe I'll develop my skills enough to be able to do it. Are you on the questions, Vin? Yeah, sweet. Do you have a but, says fundamental. I do have a but. <laughs> um. Kef Alam says, I've only recently found you. I'm very impressed. You're incredibly articulate. Ad, ab, Abdabi happened to agree with everything you say. How old are you? Just curious. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I have been punched in the head many times with, in my boxing. So to say that I'm articulate is muchly, muchly appreciated. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, I'm 28 years old. Samuel Babalola says, hello, from Nigeria. Represent Nigeria. I like your videos a lot. I just want to tell you to keep it up. Thank you, Samuel. Appreciate that, brother. Roy Sinclair, seen the new Scottish hate laws? No, but if someone could detail a little bit of that in the chat, we'll get Vinny to pull it up. N NYCV, hi, Jake. Really like your content. I was wondering, do you by any chance have any pets? I had, we had Burger as a kid. We had a sausage dog named Burger. Man, rest in peace. He died a few years ago and he was the best dog ever, literally. Um, we've got another one named Leo now. It's my mom's dog. She loves, loves Leo. We had a turtle called Tupac when we were younger. What happened to Tupac again, Vinny? Uh, we released him. We released him into the local river. And we also had skunks, didn't we? No, ferrets. ferrets. What were they called again, you remember? We had ferrets as well. But how did they die? I think rigor mortis. <laughs> I think we went on a holiday and we left. We, we told someone to um, look after them and then they didn't get fed or something. Uh, Ezra says, have you ever considered doing some videos on our British queen, Suella Braverman? No, but Suella is braver than all of the men. Anyways. Dano, did Jim Bob change your mind about libertarianism? Jim Bob, Jim Bob and I had a really great chat about libertarian. I should probably post that on this channel, to be honest. Um, now, Jim Bob and Andrew Wilson are good friends of mine, and they have definitely been very influential in my thought process, just in regards to Christian ethics and in regards to the... Because the, for those of you who didn't see the debate, we had a little bit of a debate about... I would say that the debate was about the, utili the utility of libertarianism. So I was saying that guys like, you know, Jordan Peterson and Dana White you know, keeping free speech free in the UFC and people like that are all very useful in terms of the cultural debate because they will take people who are on the left and they will take people who are atheists, liberals, et cetera, and they'll bring them around to eventually then finding their way to the truth. And I think Jim Bob and Andrew were much more opposed to the idea of libertarians because they believe that libertarians give rise to the left. Whereas I was more in the camp of, yes, I'm on the right side of politics, but I appreciate and am allies with libertarians because I think that they actually bring people from the left into the center for us to then gobble up on the right. So that was my thought process with that. But yeah, Jim Bob's cool. I'm going to have him on the channel soon, hopefully. Um, Brad Collins says, have you considered going on Elijah Schaefer's show slightly offensive. 
I I've got a bit of sun in my face, have I? It's not good. Um, I have spoken to Elijah briefly about a year ago, but then it just kind of fizzled out. And I've also got a mutual friend who reached out to me even last week. Funny you should say that about like last week or maybe two weeks ago, a friend on Twitter who said that we should do a show together. So it might happen in the future. If it does, that'd be cool. I've been watching Elijah for a number of years. Vito Shavaria says you should go on PBD. Well, that's one of the biggest podcasts in the world. I obviously love to go on PBD. I went on Valuetainment a few weeks ago on Adam Sosnick's channel on the Soscast, and that was a bit of fun. The Valuetainment studio is absolutely elite for those of you guys who have never seen it. And also, we've got a, a video on our travel channel, Rattlesnake Travel, where I go behind the scenes at Valuetainment. So check that out if, you, if you'd like to. Robert is back with another question. One of my favorite book series was Left Behind. Have you read them? Seen either of the movies with Nick Cage or Kirk Cameron? What's your opinion of Kirk Cameron? I have absolutely no idea who that person is, Kirk Cameron. That probably shows how little movies I watch. And I only read, I reckon I read my first book when I was like 24. So guys, I was like, I was a retarded until, until about that age. So don't haven't read too many books. Ben M, how much time did you take to prepare to create this channel? Well, I've been doing podcasts for years before this. So I had about, did about five years worth of podcasts where I never earned a cent off it. I reckon I've put in tens of thousands of hours of podcasts. I've done hundreds of episodes. I did, my first one was about boxing and MMA and fighting and that sort of stuff. I did probably like nearly a hundred episodes of that in Melbourne and all of the social medias and everything by myself and never, never went anywhere. And I did another one about Australian rules football after that. That took a lot of time and about a year, a year or so, I want to say, and never went anywhere with that. And then I did another one, which was me and Vinny going around and filming protests and we'd go and crash protests. I've got a few of those videos on Rattlesnake TV channel, actually. Never went anywhere with that either. And then I did another one, which was called Contrarian Daily, which was, uh, which was activism against the mandates at the time. And that was cool. We did like a global freedom rally, but that dissipated as well. So this was not an overnight success. And I, I definitely, over the years, garnered a few skills in terms of interviewing and being on camera and social media and all of that. And then eventually it clicked. And eventually I had a few videos do really well on Rattlesnake TV and it's just haven't looked back since. So took lots of time to prepare. Malibu Angel says what was the one main thing that you want to start to what was the one main thing that you made that made you oh, sorry guys that made you want to start your channels uh i don't know that's a good question i mean when i got back from london when i was in a, in like 2018 or so i just went and randomly bought a bunch of microphones. And I used to be obsessed with the Joe Rogan podcast. And I started to just learn a few things because before then, like when I was about 24, I started to, like I said before, started to, to learn a little bit more. And I started to listen to the Joe Rogan podcast and guys like Graham Hancock and Jordan Peterson. And I was just obsessed and just became infatuated by that whole entire world. So then I went and bought a few microphones myself and ended up doing more of an MMA boxing podcast because that was sort of what my background was in but um I, I just there's just sometimes in life things just click for you and when you and for me when I'm speaking into the microphone and interviewing people and making videos it's just feel like it's what I was put on this earth to do and it's a rare feeling in life but that's just the way I feel about it so Rinse Design says, hey, Jake, are you aware of the looming pandemic treaty from the WHO? And if so, what are your thoughts on how to raise the alarm and rally as one to resist the tyrannical global power grab? I actually haven't heard of that. I should have heard of that. I'm embarrassed that I haven't heard of that. If someone could drop that in the chat, that'd be great because I need to research into that. One a lot short says, question, how do you find the videos to react to and give you a commentary on? And how do you find tags for your video? By the way, big fan, buddy. Been watching you since six months and love the way you explain. What does he mean by tags? Do you know? I don't know what you mean by tags, but um, the videos, like I said before, I've been obsessed with watching debates for years. And it's literally, it's, it's how I like, I like to read guys, but paperback, I'm, I'm like autistic ADHD. I can't really sit there and read a paperback novel unless I'm really into it. So I prefer audible or I prefer watching debates. It's, it's how I learn. So um, I'd say that 
the reason why I've got so many clips is because I've watched so many debates. Like I, I've absolutely watched everything there is to watch on YouTube. But but the reason for that is because I'm I'm mean, so 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 much that way inclined. I'm just glad that other people share my interest in it. So thank you very much. M Dons says thoughts on the farmer killings in South Africa getting zero media coverage in the West. Yeah, it's an absolute atrocity. I mean, my family is part South African. My dad fought in the South African Angola border war. My dad grew up in South Africa. And we went there when I was 14 or so. But the reason why it doesn't get any coverage is because they're white guys. And um, unfortunately, when these things are happening to white people, it's just a little pat on the head. Oh, poor little whitey, whatever. But uh, the Dutch farmers and the the Boer that they call them in South Africa are the reason why that country is still um, functioning. So when they are fully gone, you're going to see a Haiti situation because this is what happened the people, the Haitian people killed their colonial rulers a few hundred years ago. And look where Haiti is now, guys. So, I mean, I'm not going to say too much, more of a rumble type conversation, but as soon as the Boer are wiped out as they want to happen, um, that that country is going to go to shit. The ANC, the African National Congress, Mandela's party, are uh, completely corrupt. They've nationalized all of the energy industry, so they have a total monopoly on all of that. And they're... It just it's a failed state so if i were in south africa i'd be trying to get out and we've met a lot of south africans in our travelers as well and you know a lot of white south africans in thailand and bali and places like this and they've fleed and it's not a good situation guys but you know they're white so who cares i guess big koala says do you have an opinion on the federal reserve or whether it should be abolished or amended the federal reserve is an organization that is that was formed uh in the early 1900s by a bunch of very powerful individuals and we actually don't even know where that money gets funneled to so there's a book called uh creatures of jekyll island i think it's called that talks all about that and the formation of the federal reserve it's yeah uh, obviously i would like to get rid of the federal reserve um but you get jfk'd if you try and do that guys so can't talk about that um what do you think of bernie sanders and the squad i used to be a big bernie bro guys i used to like aoc alexandria ocasio cortez and i used to think she was like you know hot or whatever <laughs> and i used to yeah i used to be one of those guys but that's because i didn't really tune into politics and i just see the 10 second sound grabs of her saying giving a better attitude to like a reporter or something and yeah bernie sanders is <sighs> It used to be about the millionaires and now it's about the billionaires. Yeah, he's a, he's a hypocrite and he's a rich dude who's enjoying the spoils of capitalism and he has been wrong about so many things. He honeymooned in the Soviet Union. He was one of the proponents of Venezuela when he thought that Venezuela was this booming state. I mean, the guy's been wrong at every step of the way. So how you could, I mean, I can kind of respect him in the sense that like, He's stuck by his principles, I guess. But there comes a time when you just have to grow up and say, oh, shit, this socialism stuff, it doesn't work. So looking forward to when Bernie does that and the squad. Brickhouse Oz says, what do you think about the immigrants flooding Australia or for so-called skilled workers when Australia Aussies are homeless? Does BlackRock have anything to do with it? Cheers. Uh, BlackRock probably does have something to do with it. I can't exactly zoom in on that and point to it. But yeah, it's it's crap. I mean, for a while there, Australia was doing really well in terms of keeping immigrants out of the country. And we had we would turn the boat people away. The people would come on the boats, turn them away. That's what you should be doing. If you need to you need to keep some sort of level of cultural homogeneity in your country. Sorry, guys, and ethnic homogeneity. You can't just have people from the third world flooding your borders. It doesn't work. That's how societies fall apart because we don't have a shared values and ethics system. Um, I think there was a chart that Vinny, you were showing me the other day where the Indians in Australia are just going like this. And it was like one of those videos where it shows a time lapse of the, of the economic, of the uh, migrants. And it was just sort of like this for a little while and Italians coming in. And then, and then all of a sudden it just goes, boom, Indians and Chinese just shooting through the roof. And they're, they're not of the same religion to Australia. I mean, Australia is not a very religious country, but generally Australia is founded on a Christian ethic and Christian morality. And, you know, Chinese are about China. Chinese are like the, one of the most supremacist countries in the world. They, they don't want to come here and represent Australia's interests. 
And then Indians, I mean, they'll fix your phone, but like otherwise, they're not they're not really of the same of the same ethics. All right, let's go. Chuck those super chats up. Oh, my my computer's about to dive in. Here. Sorry, guys. Need to get my need to get the tech wizard onto it. The computer's about to die. Um, so Jody Samurai says, "How confident is Willis?" It's not charging. No, it's not. I think you just need a, it's it's a bit of a bit of a fiddly one. Um, how confident is Willis going forward in her case? Is this the Fanny and Freddie Willis? I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much, to to be honest, guys. I wish I could give a better answer, but I'm I'm pretty uneducated about that, if I'm totally honest. So I can't really say too much. But free Donald Trump. He's the king of America. Way up north. Thank you for the super chat, my brother. Says, you, Douglas Murray, and that idiot on the Young Turks would be epic. I'm sure you could find a subject. I don't know who that idiot is, but that's a terrible name. But me and Douglas Murray on the Young Turks would be quite the tag team. Me and Vinny went and saw the wrestling the other week in, in uh, where do we see it, in Nashville? Yeah, the oh no, in Memphis, Tennessee, we went and saw the WWE. So me and Douglas Murray tagging each other in and then just get now. He wouldn't get violent with the Young Turks, guys. I wouldn't, wouldn't get violent. Juju Mulga says, fan request, would you recite the poem The Snake for us like Trump does at rallies? Let me Google that. The Snake poem. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to Google this really quickly because I don't know what this is. Most people. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, what's the next question? <laughs> Yeah, I can't even see what it is. All right. Brian Lewis, you had Waters on, or you, you were on his show. Wow. Yeah, Jesse Waters, the big guy from Fox, Fox News. That was good fun. Like I said before, we might be getting another one. They've got a studio in Nashville, so um, might be making an appearance down there soon. <laughs> we got any more, or is that it, Benny? Yeah. Jake the Just says, I'm thinking of starting a channel creating video essays on Jungian archetypes. Do you have any advice? Yes, I do have some advice. Um, first of all, that's a good, that's a good um, it's a good topic. If I were you, and this is maybe just my formula, I don't know if it works for anybody, but I would use people like Jordan Peterson as a way to get people into the channel. So if you're doing Jungian archetypes, for example, I would get very famous clips of Jordan Peterson talking about Jungian archetypes. And I have Jordan Peterson in the thumbnail because people are much more likely to click on Jordan Peterson than they are to click on you. I'm sure that you're very good looking with a name like Jake, you probably are. But yeah, if I were you, I'd do that. Get uh, some some very clickable thumbnails and clickable titles and and expand on the work of people like Jordan Peterson. And then eventually, if you do that enough, then maybe people will return to the channel to hear your commentary. So, Edward Rosser, will you please debate Vouch? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. I'd, I'd debate Vouch for sure, but uh, he's, he's a very disingenuous guy, though. I will say that. I've seen him debate, and, you know, he's obviously a smart dude, but he's very disingenuous. Um, if you guys want to see him get absolutely smoked, go and watch him debate Andrew Wilson on, of The Crucible about birth rates. It's a bloodbath. Would you consider interviewing Maj Toure? Sorry, guys. I'd need to quickly Google these people because... Oh, hold on a second. I don't know what is going on with my Google. Sorry, guys. I'm such a boomer. Maj Toure. Maj Toure is an American libertarian political activist and rapper. Toure is closely associated with M Mrs. Caucus, wing of American Libertarian Party, uh, a native of North Philadelphia, Toure founded the educational nonprofit organization Black Guns Matter. Base. I actually think I've seen that guy, you know. I think I've seen that guy on social media. Yeah, I'd interview him, sure, if he, if he wanted to do that. NYCV says, how much time do you spend researching your topics and before making a video? Normally all the videos I'll take, the reason why I upload one a day is because it takes me an entire day. So, for example, the one I did today of Candace Owens debating all these different people, that took me about 
10 hours to do all the research of because I did a few clips there about about God and about theology. So if I ever go into those topics, then I'll spend a lot of time researching it. But yeah, I mean, to be honest with you guys, I work seven days a week, 12, 15 hours a day, and so does Vinny. So we don't have a social life, literally don't even remember what a girl looks like. So yeah. Crispy, what crypto do you hold? Love from Kalamazoo. Uh, I don't I don't know. I do hold crypto though, but my eldest brother is the top G and he I just give him the money and he does the investing. So Mini Girl says, How old are you? Do you have a family? Did you have a good childhood? Um, I'm 28. I have the I have a family, but not my own family yet. That's hopefully in the future. If I can find a nice Christian beautiful girl who brings peace and joy to my life then that will happen i'll put some babies in her and what was the last bit of that did i have a good childhood i had the best childhood yeah i didn't come from a rich family i came from the sort of hood in melbourne and yeah i had a rough, i had a rough childhood my dad died when i was 14 which rocked the foundations of my teenage years i went to four different high schools i was involved in all sorts of gangs and violence and drugs and so yeah that was that was tough but yeah, before that, when my family was a unit, we didn't have much, but damn, we were happy though. We were happy. We were playing around the around the um, the streets on our little green machines. I was talking about that. Vinny is, by the way, is my brother, who's a producer here. He doesn't show his face because he's butt ugly. He got all the got all the um, leftovers in the gene pool. But um, yeah, so yeah, we had a great childhood, man. We were playing around the streets before all of the TikTok and and the computers came about. So yeah. Had the best childhood. Um, Big Koala says, question, if you consider doing a theological interview in the future, would you consider slotting in Pastor Steve Anderson? He is banned in like 30 countries or something for just preaching the Bible. Send him my way, guys. If you guys know these people or if I'm not going to remember all of these, so if you want to Jake Rattle SNK, Jake Rattle SNK on Instagram and Twitter, please feel free to send me a DM. I may not reply to them all, but I see them all. And if you guys have people that you'd like to be interview, send me their Instagram pages or their socials or their emails and I can, I can reach out. Or if you know people, then for sure. But I do do theological interviews. I'm actually doing one today with my, a Jewish friend of mine, getting to know a little bit more about Judaism. So that'll be interesting. Jerrica Morell says, I've been following you for about eight months and you're one of my favorite YouTube channels. Thank you, Jerrica. I truly appreciate your calm demeanor and informative videos. Who else would you like to interview? Top five. Can I do Dead or Alive? What should I do? Dead or alive? Yeah. William Lane Craig would probably be my first one because he's the goat. Christopher Hitchens would be like, I wish that he was still alive. He's got so much to add to the world and just the, the theological debates are so much better when Christopher Hitchens is around. Um, Hunter S. Thompson would be another one. Uh, and then it would probably be Jordan Peterson and Candace Owens. Uh, Brian Lewis, what is your take on Maui wildfires? And DEWs is that Mountain Mountain Dew? Ma who drank my Mountain Dew? <laughs> um, I, I I'm not going to speculate about the Mountain the Maui wildfires, guys. I haven't looked into it enough. I wouldn't give you a very good response. And I love Mountain Dew. Ben Sherman says, "Which left wing idea do you most agree with?" Which left wing idea? Do I, you know what? I'd say the one that I probably am most sympathetic towards would be legalizing cannabis, legalizing marijuana. I think there's a really good argument to be had for legalizing marijuana. However, I, there are also studies that show that it really can be quite detrimental for the brain below 25. And I actually, when I was a teenager, when I went through that like rough patch, I used to smoke weed every day. I was just with my friends, just you know, that was basically my life. And I, and it was the killer of all human motivation for me. I'd never got anything done. I felt like a piece of shit all the time. So from my personal experience, it's not a good thing, but I, I can, I can see the argument for why one might want to legalize it because it is a plant. I don't know. It's a tough one guys, but that's probably one that I'd most. Yeah. Joseph says, how do you feel about Graham Hancock getting into psychedelics? Do you think that his that hurt his reputation. I love Graham, but I'm not sure that helped his cause. No, I think that that's I think that that's his lane and it's his thing. Uh, I wouldn't do ayahuasca. I've done some other ones. I've done. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on YouTube, but yeah, I've done. Can I? I've done LSD. I haven't done mushrooms. I've done DMT, and that that was a pretty wild experience. So, um, but that was before I 
started leaning into faith a little bit more. Now I'd be much, much more hesitant to do that stuff. I don't think I would do ayahuasca or DMT again, even though it was quite an insane experience. I remember when I was in the trip, I, like I, I went in there and it's something that I'd been very curious about for a very long time. And I went into the trip and I remember being in this really dark space and then looking way below me, it's like I was in like this abyss and then way, way below me was a pit of lava and there were these sort of demonic people down there, these demonic creatures. I couldn't make them out because they were so far away, but they were laughing at me and the, and the echo, the laughs were actually like echoing up towards me and they were saying, is this what you really want? Is this what you really want? And it was creepy. And at the time I sort of brushed it off and I thought, whatever. But now looking back at it, it made me think that maybe I encountered some sort of a de demonic entity. And I don't quite know what people are opening up, what kind of doors and portals people are opening up when they go into those situations. So I'm, I'm once again, I'm, I'm a bit on the fence about that one, if I'm honest, guys. What's something very powerful that I can do to get 100,000 subscribers? What's something very powerful that I can do to get 100,000 subscribers? Nothing beats hard work, hard work, guys. Unfortunately, there's no real quick... Um, there's no real quick fix. I mean, like, like I said before, it took me years and years and years it, for, for about five years. If I ever got over a hundred views on one of my previous projects videos, I was absolutely thrilled. Like it was the best thing ever. So nothing beats hard work. You've just got to put in the hours, um, find out what you like doing, but also find out what your audience likes when you do, because some people get in this sort of artist mindset with like, I don't want to sell out and just do whatever the audience wants me to do because of audience capture, but you need a bit of audience capture. You need to figure out what your audience does because your audience is going to give you feedback and what you're operating is a business and you're trying to sell something to the market. So if you don't, if you're not in tune with the market, then your, your product isn't, isn't going to be good. So this is how any business works. So make sure that you're, you know, Make sure that you're in tune with your audience as well. Aside from the, uh, Edward Rosser says, aside from flooding the US with illegal immigrants, how else do you see Democrats trying to rob Trump of his obvious victory in November? Well, I mean, they're trying to put him in jail, aren't they? They're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to put him in the slammer. So that would be the most obvious one. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, they're trying to put him in jail. That's, that's what I'd say about that. Ben M., says, did you see Anna Kasparian from freak out over the people in New York being released without bail after they dismembered bodies? I didn't see that, but Anna Kasparian's pretty based sometimes, guys. I'm not um, a massive fan of the Young Turks, but she's probably one of the ones that I actually really respect. She's, got, she's, she's on the money with a few issues. She's on the money with APAC and with that lobby that is uh, taking the American taxpayer dollars. There was a great clip that Candace Owens showed on her show the other day about Anna talking about that. She's on the money about that, about lobbyists. And I'd say that she's probably on the money about that too. So she's pretty based sometimes. I like Anna. I'd like to interview her actually. Yes. A few more super chats. Let's do it. Jody Samurai, thank you for the super chat. What's the deal with YouTube moderators? But YouTube have been pretty good to me, guys. I mean, I don't know. Do I say anything crazy? I'm pretty smart about it, I think. I mean, I know that I could say crazy things, but I'm not going to because this is my platform. And I think that if you eventually want to go to war and if you eventually want to really tackle a certain topic, then you first have to build an army. So uh, I'm not trying to get myself canceled, but they've been pretty good to me so far. Truck in Pat X says, you've been seeing Planet Fitness boycott. No, but I actually haven't been to a Planet Fitness while I've been here. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been seeing a Planet Fitness boycott. If you'll let me know in the chat what they did, that'd be cool. Malibu Angel <laughs> says, will you have Candace on your channel one day? That would be ideal. I'm actually in Nashville at the moment, so I probably should go and like, you know, start a petition, find where Candace lives, go to the Daily Wire, knock on the door, plead my case. We saw her at the UFC the other day. That's true. We're at the UFC in Miami and we were in the cheap seats because we're brokies. And we were looking down and we saw Candace Owens and Dana White and it's fantastic. Edward Rosser says, would you consider bringing DEI to the Rattlesnake TV studio? Yes, I would actually. Um, Vinny, I don't know, you guys can't see him, but he's actually wearing a purple wig right now and a dress. And um, he is, yeah, that, that's a part of, he actually fits the whole mold. One day I'll show him on camera, but he fits the whole entire mold of all of the different diversity boxes that I would like to tick. So um, when Larry Fink calls me and just says, Rattlesnake, what's going on? How are you? 
which he does all the time, um, he's pretty happy with me. So, yeah, we've got DEI here at Rattlesnake TV. Equity. That's it. Gareth Simmons, Lord X, bad experience for sure. Evangelical church, don't really know what that means. Far out. I'm like so far behind. Joseph says, do you see Anna Kasparian eventually getting red-pilled? She may be the next Dave Rubin. She is pretty red-pilled, guys. I mean, she's she's still got a lot of the sort of... How do I put this nice? She's still got a lot of the bleeding heart liberal tendencies and i don't know if she can go back on that but you can tell just by her demeanor every time she's on her show and every time i've seen her doing interviews and fighting with chunk yogurt on her show she looks like she's so disenfranchised with the left because they're nuts they are nuts these are the kinds of people who are saying that men can be women and women can be men and these are the kinds of people that are going out and, and doing the queers for palestine like the left has lost their mind guys so if you are a representative of that then you are you you are out of your mind. Um, the left is not what it used to be. You know, back in back in like the eighties and nineties, the classical liberals and these guys who were just sort of these bougie leftists. Now this is a rabid movement. So if you're not at least in the libertarian center center right or on the right, you're not cool, guys. You're not cool at all. Are we all done? Wow, that was cool. How long have we been going for? 50 minutes. Wow, that went quickly. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these live streams, by the way. I wouldn't mind getting a few of you in there. So if any of you fancy yourself as, you know, having some good things to say, I want to get one of these going weekly, doing a live stream. And then you, I'll actually can bring you guys into the, into the live stream to come and give you two cents worth. So, I mean, uh, let's, let's get them going. And if you guys ever want to do that, then just slide into our DMs, rattlesnake.tv on Instagram, and we'll get you in there. Big Koala says, even though people like Hitler are basically the incarnation of the devil in today's world, would you consider reading his book? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can't get it. I tried to get it the other day. I mean, I'd read, I'd read Hitler's book. I'd read Mao's book. I'd read Stalin's book. I mean, Mao's little red book. That'd be a fascinating document to read. Um, I've read a few books about Stalin, but they're biographies by other people. Um, this is just history, guys. If you don't want to learn and read about history and get into the mind of one of the most in, like famous people ever, and one of the people who the one of the people who the world literally sees as, like you said, the incarnation of the devil, then you're missing out. So yeah, hundred percent I'd read it. Gareth Simmons says, My question would be, who is the podcast host you love the most? That's a good one. It's a podcast is a bit of a good, a bit of a broad question though, to be honest. Like I used to love Rogan. I don't listen to him as much anymore. I find him a little bit frustrating at times. Oh, podcast, and interviewer. podcast and interviewer. Candace Owens would be the best interviewer for sure. She's absolutely on fire at the moment. I, mm, gosh, podcast. Do I listen to any podcasts? I don't really think I... Probably PBD. Yeah, PBD would be the best podcast. It's probably the only podcast I really listen to. A lot of the other ones are a bit too niche for my liking. But the the, the podcast that I actually listen to the most is called, what's it called? Um, Bible Beginning to End. Basically just the Bible and they take you through the different stories of the Bible and then they'll give you a bit more context to it. So Bible Beginning to End, that's my, that's my favorite podcast. LW says, Aussie men are hot. Would you like to talk with Dan Bongino? Thank you. Um, Aussie men are pretty hot though, guys. This is actually a fact. And this is something that I really noticed when I went back to Australia. Not that I'm noticing all these, you know, hot Aussie men, but Australian women, there's this perception when you're overseas, people always say, oh my God, Australian girls are so beautiful. The blonde be blonde haired beach babes. Not really, guys. Not really. No, 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 no. That's not the case. But Australian guys are absolute chads. Like we, we have a massive blue collar um uh sort of identity in australia where carpenters and plumbers and electricians and such they all earn really good money and they tend to be in good shape people tend to be in good shape in australia we have a lot of fatties as well but people tend to go to the gym and where i'm from in the sunshine coast you don't see any fat people so and australian guys are generally like pretty 
sort of big and masculine and chads. And then Australian girls, especially when you go to Europe, it's just the standard is way up here in Europe and then way down here in Australia. So you often see guys who are chads with some pretty mid girls. So if I was a female and if I wanted to find myself a good looking, masculine, chad, high earning husband, and I was from Eastern Europe or something, I would literally go stand on the street in Australia and you'd be snapped up in five minutes by an absolute chat. So what was the question? Was there a question in that? Uh, uh, super chat. Planet Fitness by Truck in Pat X. Planet Fitness is letting men in the women's locker room. The letting. They letting men in women's locker room. A lot of people are walking out. Yeah, well, so they should be. I mean, if you want to let penis wielding blokes in a woman's locker room where you know your wives mothers daughters sisters will be then afuera as far as i'm concerned uh i can see a few more questions evan you got them? roy sinclair what is your honest opinion of the girl who was a cat she's a horrible person guys and i really don't say that lightly um she said some pretty mean things after about myself and brian and yeah, she was just, she's just nasty. She ignored me. She ignored me after the show because we had that disagreement and she's just a bit of a narcissist. And uh, normally I don't like to go too hard on judging people. And I like, I like to realize that, you know, people have their different struggles in life. We all bear our own cross, but that really got into the place of being quite narcissistic and nasty. So she was not nice. Miguelito Roman, what would it take to a second? What, what would it take to a, Second age of enlightenment. Are we doomed or is there hope? Well, this is the kind of Christian nationalist idea. And it's something that in principle and in theory, I do support in the sense that if we were to move towards a more fundamental sense of Christianity, where we really base our communities and our lives on the on the ideas of Christian ethics, then we could move towards somewhat of an enlightenment period. Um, however, the problem that I see with that and the reason why I don't like to abandon libertarians, for example, and abandon the center, I think that they're useful and they should be friends and allies, is because who holds the levers of power in society? Hint, guys, it's not Christians. So um, that's the problem. If we, we, I think that we need to be thinking as Christians what is the way forward. So um, if, you want, if we want to see a new renaissance, we have to be thinking – well, we can't go back to the 1950s and be and be living in that type of world. The future is AI. The future is content. Um, the future is the metaverse and all of these things. The future is cryptocurrency, and we have to be thinking how we can actually get ourselves into into positions of institutional power if we want to have this Christian ethic renaissance. If we are just complaining all the time and sitting back thinking, you know, being at, like Oliver Anthony, you know, singing with your dog in the in the park. It does, just doesn't really help anything. So it could be renaissance, but if we don't get in positions of power, it could be more like a Christian genocide of sorts. So, I mean, I've got much deeper thoughts on that, but it's a good question. Oh, someone said before about Dan Bongino. Would I like to talk with Dan Bongino? That's a good one. I actually met Dan Bongino last year. I didn't meet him, meet him, but we're at his event last year of the Police State film. Um, at Mar-a-Lago, it was Dinesh D'Souza and Dan Bongino's film, more Dinesh D'Souza's film, and he was there, and they're all at Mar-a-Lago, and that was kind of cool. So, is it, you guys know Dan Bongino is absolutely jacked. He looks like the biggest Chad in real life. He's like six foot four and just massive. I didn't realize. I thought kind of when I looked at his show, he kind of struck me as a bit of like a short guy, but nah, Dan's a Chad. Miguelito Roman is back. What would it take? I oh, know it was a. Paul S. says, when will you come to Albania? We want to go to Albania at some point. I was looking at, well, I want to go to the Baltics this year. I think I mentioned that before, going to some Baltic countries. But Albania as well, I would like to go there. We were going to go to Bosnia-Herzegovina. I really want to go to Sarajevo, and I really want to go to where the uh, genocide happened in the 90s and go check that out because we're interested in that sort of thing. But Bosnia apparently has really beautiful scenery as well. So I would like to come. Sorry, sorry. Albania apparently does have really beautiful scenery. And I have a friend named Gens who I was good friends with in, in high school who's Albanian. He used to tell me to go to Albania. So shout out Gens, man. I haven't heard from him in a long time. 
Gareth Sims, do you have a favorite Bible book, Jake? Uh, Proverbs. So much wisdom. Sam Holden says, where do you watch the United Liverpool game? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to, I don't speak to United supporters on this channel. So just, yeah, probably uh, stay away, buddy, or else there's going to be trouble. Minus one, full stop, says, I thought it would make for a great piece of journalism to actually find out if a country such as Venezuela actually emptied out their prisons. Would that be something you could do or confirm? Um, I like danger tourism, guys, but the problem with that is if you're going to a country like Venezuela, to uncover some sort of systemic corruption, you might just find yourself missing out in the Amazon somewhere with no down up the Amazon without a paddle, you might say. We've been to Cambodia, we've done a documentary there, but it's not that subversive because the Cambodians kind of accept that they, you know, did the genocide in the 1970s and they've moved on. Although a lot of the Cambodian Khmer Rouge that were in power in the 1970s are still in power, they just kind of took the red robes off today so there was actually very dodgy when we went to the prison in cambodia there we had to they we had to put our camera away and film with just an iphone and they were really sus on us but that documentary will come out eventually lucky 2847 says who do you think is most important speaker today i believe it's jordan peterson thoughts i would agree with you i think it's jordan peterson yep i think that jordan peterson has had a greater impact in terms of bringing people to faith than anybody else and i think that the, the one thing that we're losing at the moment more than anything, and it's the fundamental fundamental part of what we're losing, is we're losing our connection to the eternal, to God, and to ideas of ethics and morality, and we don't understand what guides us anymore. So I think that Jordan Peterson is very important in that regard. We will do three more questions. Three more questions. Let's go. Jody Samurai says, have you had John Lennox on your channel? No, but I would absolutely love to have John Lennox on my channel. I saw that my good friend Brandon at Daily Dose of Wisdom, who was on my podcast, had John Lennox recently. So maybe I'll uh, go and shake down Brandon for his email address. We'll see. Yombi! Jake, congratulations, my friend. I'm glad your hard work is paying off. God bless. Yombi is a regular in the chat, the live, the live chats, Telegram group and everything. So love your work, brother. Thank you. Shout out Sea Fish, another one. Yes, sir. Alan Smith, do you think the really crazy leftists actually believe what they say or do you think they're paid to say what they say? Well, it depends what you mean by that, because when you look at some of the Antifa protests, for example, they're not actually paid, but these organizations are funded by NGOs. So they're funded by NGOs such as the Soros Foundation, who will like they will they will fund certain people who are then put in place the infrastructure. And then you get all the useful idiot retards who will just come along and try and be a part of something and try and be little revolutionaries. So some people are paid, but only the smart ones get paid, guys. Most of them are just idiots, useful idiots. So. Ben M, love your work. And, uh, last question. Last question. Oh, where are we? I don't even know where we are. Right to the bottom, right to the bottom where it says mum loves you too. Uh, Miguelito says, do you ever get angry when covering a topic that you know contradicts your values? How do you handle it? I don't get angry. But I actually like covering those topics that contradict my values because then I can give some pushback on it because if I was just covering people who agreed with me all the time or who I agree with all the time, then it would get a little bit boring. Um, but we can do one, one or two more. What do you reckon, me? Paul S says, do you like Andrew Tate? Yes, I like Andrew Tate. I'm a big fan of Andrew Tate. I think that the absolute vast majority of things, I think that really any red-blooded man who watches Andrew Tate and a significant amount of Andrew Tate for that matter and doesn't like him, I think you're a little bit nuts if I'm honest. I can understand why he would be distasteful in some of the things that he says and you wouldn't agree with many of the things that he says. But me, for example, like I, I just get it because he, he's from the rough ends of Luton and I'm kind of from a bit of a rough area myself and he, he was a kickboxing world champion. I've done combat sports myself and – the level of dedication that it takes to get to where he got is incredible and to get to the, to, to reach the heights that he's reached. And also he's very inspiring. And the things that he says are often incredibly inspiring. And even on my travels, I reckon I've met 
more like more than two handfuls of guys who have started listening to Andrew Tate and that's been their mo- main motivation where they've said started listening to Andrew Tate started hitting the gym wanted to get into business he he is very inspiring and it would not surprise me if it is for that reason alone that people want to take him out so last one lucky 2847 before you go thanks for what you do well thank you guys i appreciate you very much we got i think we've got to wrap this up don't we Vin? because we've got um a in person interview happening uh, I don't know if you guys you guys won't be able to see it, obviously, but we've got all of these slidings and everything set up around us. It's all Vinny's work, as I don't even know what it's called. But uh, we've got multiple cameras, and we're doing an interesting interview with uh, with uh, somebody in Nashville. So um, we'll be releasing that pretty shortly. And there we go. We've got already three podcasts that we've done that we need to release as well, and then another one, another two we're doing today, another two in person interviews. So it's our first ones with the camera today and hopefully it all goes well. Um, Yeah. So thank you all so much guys. 500 K. I actually cannot believe it in just over a year. Um, I appreciate you all appreciate all the likes, subscribes, appreciate all the questions, all the love. Just want you guys to know that if any of you have messaged me or anything, even if I don't reply, I do see them all. I'd appreciate everything. And um, with that, Jake rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous. And uh, peace out, guys. Much love. Take care. Like this video.